Hello world, this is my implementation of CS50W's Commerce PSET, an online eBay-like auction site written in Python using Bootstrap, SQL and the Django framework. On screen just now is the site's index page. This page shows us all of the website's current live listings. Each item is shown as a Bootstrap card with a preview summary of the listing's information. Clicking on any of the cards takes us to that individual entry. Each entry lists a title, an image, a description, a category, a starting bid, a current bid, if any exists, the seller and any comments on the item. Users can additionally add and remove the item from their watch list by clicking the checkbox as shown just now. So let's test out some of the site's functionality. We can see here that Scruffy Dog's starting bid is just £1 and the current leading bid is £2. If we place a bid below £2, so that's below the starting bid and the current leading bid, we receive a warning notification. If, however, we bid above £2, let's be really generous here and bid 10 whole pounds, we receive a success banner and see that the lead bid field is updated. We can also add comments using the text area field. What a good boy. Now working our way across the navbar from left to right, next up is categories, of which we currently have four. Fashion, toys, electronics and home, although more can be added to the website easily. You'll see that we currently have one item listed in the fashion category, stupid hat, but none in the toy category. Now clicking on any of the entries takes us to that individual item. Here's fancy lamp from the electronics category. And you'll notice that on this item we can't add it to a watch list, we can't bid on it and we can't leave a comment. But what we can do is we have an option to close the listing. Now this is because the user logged in at this moment is the user that created the listing. You'll also see that by closing this auction and returning to the index, we can find a new page listing all of the closed items. Here's stupid hat and fancy lamp that we closed just a moment ago. Moving on, we can see a user's watch list. And in this instance, the return of our smelly friend, Scruffy Dog. So as a quick reminder, at the moment we are signed in, we have Scruffy Dog on our watch list and we also have the leading bid of £10. If, however, we were to sign in as the person who listed Scruffy, in this case the user super user, you'll see that we can end the auction by clicking the close listing button in red. So with the leading bid, this means our previous user has won Scruffy. And by signing back in, by navigating to the closed listings page and selecting Scruffy Dog, we can see just that. We can see that the listing has been updated as appropriate and the page announces to great fanfare that we are now the proud owner of this site's unofficial mascot. Finally, we can also create new items. Here we select create from the navbar and in the new page provide a name, a description, a category and also an optional image URL and a minimum bid. Here I'm entering some information for a Saturn V rocket. And by returning to the index page, we can see our new listing with a low, low starting price of just £1 billion. Moving on, we can append our site's URL with admin to view the site's admin interface. Listed on the left hand side are four SQL tables, bids, comments, listings and users. So in addition to changing our database through our website as we just did previously, we can also make modifications here directly. So Ceramic Bowl, for example, now has a starting bid of £25 and is being sold not by Sarah, but by the user Red. Finally, here is the code running our website. So the JavaScript, which describes our confetti animation, our logos, our CSS style sheet. Here are all of our HTML templates, so our layout page, which describes all the consistent elements across all the pages, and also variable pages, such as listing.html. Here is admin.py, which describes our admin interface, and models.py, which sets out our four SQL tables, and also the relationships to one another through foreign keys and many-to-many -many fields. Here are our site's URLs, and finally, views.py, essentially the engine of our app, approximately 300 lines of Python code which defines the functions associated with each view. And there we have it. My implementation of Commerce is part of CS50's web programming with Python and JavaScript. My name is Ross. Bye for now and see you next time.